In this video, I will go over AP Precalculus topic 3.2 about sine, cosine, and tangent. First, we're going to talk about angles in standard position. Okay, if we have an angle in standard position, uh, the vertex of the angle is at the origin. The initial side is the positive x-axis. So in this diagram, this is our initial side. And then we're going to measure up to this other ray, which is called the terminal side, or the terminal ray. Now, we can measure angles both uh, with a positive angle or a negative angle. If our angle is positive, so this is my theta, if theta is positive, then we go from the x-axis this direction, or in a counterclockwise direction. If our angle is presented to us in a, as a negative value, rather than going counterclockwise, we're going to go clockwise. Okay. In AP Precalculus, we will be measuring angles using something called a radian. Okay, you're probably familiar mostly with using degrees, especially from your geometry class. Uh, but in pre-calc, we use radians. Uh, so the radian of a measure in standard position is the ratio of the length of the arc of the circle centered at the origin subtended by the angle to the radius of that same circle. So in a formula, the measure of an angle in radians is the arc length divided by the radius. Now we have a special case, which we will be dealing with frequently, and that's if we have a unit circle. A unit circle is a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 1. Well, if I have a radius of 1, we'd be dividing by 1. So on a unit circle, whatever the angle is, is equal to the arc length. Okay. Uh, as a reminder, a circumference is 2 pi r. Okay. So I'm going to consider a standard position angle. Uh, whose terminal side is on the positive y-axis, so we're up here, and it subtends a circle with a radius of 5. So what we need to do is find this arc length and divide it by the radius. I'm going to do this separately. Okay, well, the arc length. Uh, here, this is just a quarter of a circle, so the arc length is going to be a quarter of the circumference, which will be 2 pi r, where my radius is 5. So this would give me 10 pi over 4, or 5 pi over 2. But that's just the arc length. For the radian measure, it's that arc length, 5 pi over 2, divided by the radius, which was 5. Well, 5 pi divided by 2 divided by 5 is pi over 2. So the radian measure of this angle here is pi over 2. Okay, our next example. We have a figure that gives an angle in standard position where the measure is 0.75 pi. So this is giving us the radian measure. Uh, the circle has a radius of 4. We want to know the length of the minor arc, so we're kind of finding the arc length given this information. Okay, well, our radian measure is equal to the arc length over the radius. Well, we have 0.75 for my radian measure. My arc length is what we're trying to find over my radius of 4. So I'm going to multiply 0 0.7 times 0.75, which is 3 fourths, times 4, which is going to give me 3 pi, is going to be my arc length. Next, let's talk about sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, hopefully, by being an AP Precalculus student, this is not the first time you are seeing sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, but just as a reminder, um, 
us math teachers tend to like the mnemonic so ka toa and in a lot of trig stuff that can get you the right triangle trig, trig stuff just helps uh, so if we have an angle in standard position so here I have angle theta is in standard position we can find the theta um, based our sine cosine and tangent based on our right triangle trig Okay. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if we're in standard position, we're now on an xy coordinate. So this distance is our x, this distance is our y. We have a point P here with coordinate xy. Well, the sine of this angle is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, which in here is going to be y over r, where r is the radius of whatever circle we're dealing with. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So in that case, it's going to be the x over r. And tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent, which will be y over x. Okay, um, so again, you can use right triangle trig uh, a little bit more formally. So just looking at this picture, sine of theta is the ratio of the vertical displacement of p from the x-axis to the distance between the origin and the point, which is our r. Cosine is the ratio of the horizontal displacement to p and the distance between the point and the origin. Tangent is the slope of this line. Okay, think about it. Slope is rise over run. So if I have y over x, that's slope. Uh, it's the ratio of the vertical displacement over the horizontal displacement. We're going to look at the trig functions in each quadrant just to kind of get a big picture of what we can expect in different quadrants as far as the sign of them. Um, so x and y will change signs depending on what quadrant we're in. r, the distance from the center to the origin, or from our point to the origin, is always going to be positive. So sine is going to follow whatever the sine of y is, cosine is going to follow whatever the sine of x is, tangent is going to be a combination of the two. Write those down. Uh, so in the first quadrant, uh, both sine and cosine are positive. So sine is positive, cosine is positive, and tangent is positive. In the second quadrant, my sine is positive because my y values are positive there. But my cosine is going to be negative because my x values are negative there. And my tangent is going to be the y divided by the x, so it will also be negative. In my fourth quadrant, both sine and cosine are negative because both x and y are negative. My tangent, though, will be positive because we're dividing a positive by a negative. In my fourth quadrant, sine is negative because y is negative. Cosine is positive because x is positive, but tangent is negative because it's x over y, so we've got a, or y over x, so we've got a negative over a positive. So in each quadrant, first quadrant, everything's positive. Second quadrant, sine is positive. Third, tangent is positive. Fourth, cosine is positive. So a mnemonic I like to use is all students take calculus. A, S, T, C for what's positive. Or just using our understanding of positive and negatives. Next, I've got a circle with a radius of 5. I have an angle theta that terminates at the point negative 3, negative 4. And we're going to find the three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, for that point. Sine is the y value over our radius, 5. So the y is negative 3 over 5, or we could write this as negative 3 fifths. Cosine is our x value over that radius. T 
tangent is going to be the y value over the x value. So that's going to be negative 3 over negative 4, or a positive 3 fourths. So that was 3.2 sine, cosine, and tangent.